Yes, Forever Young with Elaine Silver. What a wonderful singer. Welcome to our December service here at the Church of Perpetual Life. My name is Neil Vandry and I am your officiator here and we are streaming live from our new church here in Pompano Beach. If this is your first time joining us here at Perpetual Life, I'd like to invite you to join our email list so that you can get updates on all that is going on with super longevity so that you may live a longer and healthier life. You can join our email simply by emailing me through the website at perpetual.life. There are groups of people creating watch parties around the country and around the world, and we welcome you to do the same in your local area. This Saturday, we will be celebrating our virtual holiday party in union with the worldwide holiday party with Natasha Vita Moore and her friends. And you are welcome to join us here virtually Saturday, December the 18th. And we'll be joining with the mortalists around the world, toasting for super longevity. To join the party, you can go into the direct link again at our website, www.perpetual.life. At the top of the page, you'll find the link for that holiday party registration. Next month, we have two events for you. Our annual celebration of Bedford Day, which is January 12th, where we have Ben Best giving a presentation. And that will be our next service after that will be the fourth Thursday in January, January the 27th. So two events next month, Bedford Day, January the 12th, and our regular service on the fourth Thursday in January, January 27th. Both will begin at 6 p.m. Eastern time for a virtual party and the actual live stream will begin at 7 p.m. Join with me on our creed. Let's uh, recite our creed. If you'd like to join with me, you're welcome to. We believe that all life is sacred and that we have been given this one life to make unlimited. We believe in our creator's divine plan for all of humanity to have infinite lifespans in perfect health and eternal joy, rendering death to be optional. By following our gospel, we achieve eternal life, creating a heaven here on earth. And we follow Nikolai Fedora, who taught that the transcendence of the creator will only be solved when humanity in our unified efforts become an instrument of universal resuscitation, when the divine word becomes our divine action. And we follow Arthur C. Clarke, who said, the only way to discover the limits of the possible is to go beyond them into the impossible. And so we enter each day energized in spirit and empowered by the words of our prophets to live in joy, serving our creator and all of mankind forever and ever. At this time, I'd like to share a new video that's coming out on life extension, Longevity Hackers. Longevity Hackers states, uh, could humans live to 130? or even stop aging. This new film is set to dive into these questions and has lined up some of longevity's biggest hitters to discuss potential answers. Will humans live longer than the current record and stay physically and mentally fit? Asks Sergey Young. World leading industry experts share their views on the current state of affairs in the longevity industry and its nearest future with the audience of the Longevity Hackers documentary. Watch this insightful movie to get deep understanding of what awaits us very soon. Backed by Longevity Tech Fund, Longevity Hackers is co-produced by Ruben Figueres, a successful entrepreneur and experienced president, and directed by Mikhail Siewerski, an Emmy-nominated TV producer and Netflix-featured documentary filmmaker with over 15 years of experience in the fields of TV and film. Before we show this trailer, I'd just like to say I'm proud to say that most of the people shown in this clip have attended and spoken here at the Church of Perpetual Life. We are really looking forward to having this film as a feature in a movie night here at Perpetual Life. So let's please run the trailer on Longevity Hackers.
biggest issue that all of us are facing together is the disease of aging and the finality of death. People for thousands of years have been touting cure aging products that don't really work. People have to understand several things. Number one, the science is real. HVRSL X Prize is a global technological competition, $100 million for developing solution to reverse aging. All humans die and most people accept it as a given, but more and more people are beginning to learn that it's not necessarily something that can't be changed. We're not just talking about slowing aging, we're actually about turning back the clock. Things are going to be exponential. A good diet and exercise will help you avoid a lot of disease, but it's truly not enough. If FDA will recognize aging as a disease, it's going to be a massive inflection point for all of us. Metformin is a major side effect, is living long. People who are aging don't have the patience to wait 10 years for a drug approval. I'm mean, very excited. I think that aging can be cured a lot faster than most people are projecting. The prospect of living up to 200 years is really nothing. And what we're saying there is that people's dogs are going from old dogs to puppies again. In order to be able to treat diseases of aging, we have to understand the cause. You can't really stop aging per se, but we can significantly decelerate the process. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw reversal of aging in every way imaginable. Now we're treating the lifespan itself as somehow unnatural as something that needs to be fixed. Treating aging as a disease takes us in some directions that we should think carefully about and we should worry about. I will be able to live as long as I choose to live. I do believe that we are now in control of our own evolution. Our mission here at Perpetual Life is to assist all people in the radical extension of healthy human life. And we provide fellowship for longevity enthusiasts. At our regular services, we invite guest speakers to teach scientific rationality along with the creator's plan that humanity evolved to achieve markedly extended healthy lifespans. We follow the prophet Nikolai Fedorov's philosophy of the common task for humanity. Fedorov believed as we do here, that we should divert human energies from wars and dissensions toward measures for protecting mankind against natural disasters like floods and droughts and earthquakes and hurricanes, especially aging, and to transform nature from a temporary enemy into an eternal friend and to have unlimited lifespans. The Church, the Church of Perpetual Life, is a science and faith based transhumanist church. Our faith is in the creator and in humanity to find ways towards healthy, unlimited lifespans. We are the only brick and mortar transhumanist church in the world. At this time, our services are all virtual and we will let you know when we meet in person again. Once we start meeting in person again, we will still have these wonderful Zoom parties and live stream events. Our live stream event is being recorded and will be available after we close. You can find it on our YouTube channel and there is a link at the top of our website. Please share this recording of the event for, with all of the people that you care about and join us again next month. Now, after our main event with Jose Cordero, we will then go right into our Remembrance of the Resurrectables, our December tribute to all of those people who are in cryonic stasis. We'll go into that directly after the event. Let me introduce our speaker tonight, Jose. Luis Mateo, our speaker, is a Venezuelan, Spanish engineer, economist, futurist, and transhumanist who has worked on different areas, including economic development, international relations, Latin America, the European Union, monetary policy, comparison of constitutions, energy trends, cryonics, and life extension. Jose Cordero is a visiting research fellow, IDE Jetro, Tokyo, Japan. He is a director of the Millennium Project Venezuela Node, an adjunct professor at Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology in Russia, founder and president emeritus of the World Future Society, Venezuelan chapter, founding energy advisor faculty, Singularity University, NASA Research Park in California, 
And he has written books, including The Great Taboo, Constitutions Around the World, A Comparative View from Latin America, and in Spanish, El Desafio Latinoamericano. And most recently, my favorite, La Muerte de la Muerte, The Death of Death, currently in five languages, and by next year it will be translated into five more languages. Let's give a warm welcome to our good friend, Jose Cordero. Jose, take it away. Well, Neil, and all the friends of the Church of Perpetual Life, it is a pleasure to be back with you, even in this time virtually. I have been there twice in person in uh, South Florida, and I am looking forward to return. Right now, I am in Madrid. Uh, this is a virtual background because it is already 1 a.m. in Madrid, so it's dark here. But uh, let's imagine we have a beautiful day in beautiful Madrid, and the City Hall of Madrid is behind me. Uh, we just finished a big conference, the World Transhumanist Conference, which is called Transvision, Global Future Summit Transvisions. So let me show you a video clip of two minutes of this incredible conference that was in hybrid format, both in person and also uh, streaming live. So let's watch the clip, please. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video clip about our, our conference, um, which was fantastic to have a physical conference after all this time. But because we understand that some people still cannot travel, uh, we had live streaming. Uh, we had about 300 people registered physically here in Madrid. About half of them were um, from other countries. And then we had hundreds and hundreds of people who connected uh, to the live streaming. Um, this is all related to uh, the ideas of uh, transhumanism that go all the way from immortality to cryonics. And actually, I want to cover those two issues, which are also uh, what my book is about. The death of death has two parts. Uh, or two plans, plan A, which is immortality, and plan B, which is cryonics. Uh, this conference was uh, just a few days ago in Madrid, and uh, we had uh, incredible speakers in a fantastic place, in the most beautiful classical auditorium of Madrid, which is at the College of Physicians of Madrid, the College of Physicians. Why? we choose that place because it is important for doctors, for people in the medical field to understand that longevity and rejuvenation technologies are coming fast. And in fact, we had the opportunity to uh, visit the place where uh, Nobel Prize laureate 
uh, Santiago, Ramon, y Cajal, who discovered the neurons and the connections, the synapses, where he worked and where he taught. Uh, Nobel Prize in uh, Medicine, uh, 1903 or 04, beginning of the 20th century. A fantastic place uh, for beautiful people interested, uh, interested about the future. Uh, we also had a Nobel Prize talking about uh, the James Webb Space Telescope that is going to launch on December 22nd, and it will be the most advanced space telescope ever developed. And the idea is to find life in other planets, to identify more exoplanets and to try to identify the conditions for life. So this was a fantastic uh, talk. And he actually says that it is very probable there will be life in other planets. So we are all excited about that. And then we had incredible speakers. Many of them also have spoken at the Church of Perpetual Life, like Aubrey de Grey, Natasha Vita Moore, Max Moore, uh, Ben Gordsell, Liz Parrish, uh, Ben uh, Best, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Friends of our family, of our movement. Uh, we had also very interesting activities and experiences like uh, showing uh, the latest effort from Spain to go to Mars. This is called Astroland. It is an interplanetary agency and it was one of the first astrolanders to train to go to Mars. Uh, we also had a lot of robots, including uh, Sophia. We had her last time in 2018, and now we had her younger sister, Grace. Grace is a nurse robot, so that uh, she will be with people checking everything in terms of uh, medical conditions. And we did a lot of uh, video streaming, as I mentioned, and we also translated the conference uh, into Spanish because it was in English, but we had Spanish translation for the people in Spain and all over Latin America. We had fantastic, fantastic cocktails and dinners every night. And we also had two days of cultural trips. One day we went to the UNESCO World Heritage Sites north of Madrid. Basically, three fantastic places, Avila, Segovia, and El Escorial. And the following day, we went to other three fantastic UNESCO World Heritage Sites south of Madrid, Toledo, Aranjuez, and uh, Alcalá de Henares. So really fantastic places nearby Madrid. Uh, but all of this began because with another friend of mine, David Wood, who also studied in Cambridge, but he studied in Cambridge, England. I studied in Cambridge, Massachusetts, at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And about five years ago, we decided to write a book on the most urgent issue, the biggest need of humanity, which is how to stop aging, how to reverse aging, uh, and how to conquer death. So David and myself, we began working on this book, uh, first published in Spanish, in my mother tongue, La Muerte de la Muerte. And the book became number one and number five simultaneously in Amazon in Spanish. Number one in paper, number five in Kindle, electronic format. And then it has come in other editions. It has come in Portuguese, also a bestseller in Brazil and in Portugal. In, in uh, French, La Mort de la Mort, also a best-selling book in, uh, in France, Belgium, Switzerland, Luxembourg, Quebec, in Canada. And just came out recently in Russian in two different editions. And now in Chinese, we have finally chosen a beautiful cover and changed the name to Immortal Life. And also in Turkish will come out soon and it is called Immortal Human. So many editions coming up in different languages, as I mentioned, Spanish, Portuguese, French, Russian, Chinese, Turkish, German, Arabic, Japanese, Korean, and more to come. Um, I also do a chronology of life from the beginning of life in our planet, as we know, about three and a half billion years ago and into the future, at least until the year 2100, the end of this century. 
when we will be living indefinitely young and also we will have uh, resurrected people who are in cryonics. Uh, we put the dates, my co-author and myself, we estimated dates when all of these things could happen. Many of these ideas were made public uh, almost 20 years ago and a bit later in his book, Ending Aging by my friend Aubrey de Grey. At that time, it was considered crazy, impossible. So much that um, MIT Technology Review, the magazine of my alma mater, MIT, basically said that Aubrey de Grey was crazy, that this was impossible, that he was a charlatan. This was 2005. Uh, then in 2019, MIT Technology Review, the same magazine basically changed its view. And the cover of that issue was all the age is over, if you want it. So look at, at the change of mentality in less than two decades of what is happening in terms of uh, rejuvenation technologies. My other friend, uh, Ray Kurzweil, who is the founder of Singularity University together with Peter Diamandis. He has written many books about these ideas, but in one book called Fantastic Voyage, Live Long Enough to Live Forever, he talks about the three bridges towards immortality. The first bridge is in the 2010s, basically do the things that your mother told you, eat well, sleep well, do exercise, uh, maybe meditate, don't drink too much, et cetera, et cetera. That is bridge one. That will take us into bridge two in the 2020s, which are the first biotech treatments that are beginning now. And now uh, in this decade, more and more biotech treatments that will lead us into the third bridge, which is in the 2030s with nanotechnologies, including nanobots, that will basically clean our bodies. And then into the 2040s, uh, with the help of artificial intelligence, we hope to reach uh, physical immortality by 2045. Ray Kurzweil actually uh, is launching his new book, finally, again, next year in 2022, The Singularity is Nearer, or actually it might be called The Age of the Singularity. Uh, and there he talks again about 2045, and he has been explaining for the last few years what is going to happen. Basically, this is based on technological convergence between the four major technologies as identified by the National Science Foundation, Nano, Bio, Info, and Cogno, NBIC. All these four technologies are converging in the next two decades, three decades, into the singularity. The two first technologies, nano and bio, study the hardware of life, the hardware. Nano studies atoms, bio studies cells. And the two technologies in the bottom, info and cogno, they study the software of life, info, bits, and cogno neurons. And there are two dates coming up, 2029 and 2045. On the hardware side, we expect that by 2029, we will reach longevity escape velocity. That means that if we live one year more until 2030, we will gain an extra year of life. Why? Because life expectancy keeps on increasing. And by 2030, for every year we survive, we gain one extra year, but still aging. We will continue aging, but we will gain more time until 2045, when we expect to have rejuvenation technologies. Those two are on the hardware side, longevity escape velocity, sometimes called the methuselarity or the singularity of Methuselah, and then 2045 for immortality, biological immortality. On the software side, also two things will happen. By 2029, we expect to pass the Alan Turing test, which means that you will not know if you are talking to a human or if you are talking to an artificial intelligence. That again is in 2029, according to my friend Ray Kurzweil. And then by 2045, we will have a global artificial intelligence that will 
be more intelligent than all of humanity together. And that is the time of the singularity, when artificial intelligence matches and exceeds human intelligence. But it enhances human intelligence. It combines with human intelligence. It amplifies human intelligence. It augments humans. And this is happening exponentially faster, and things are becoming smaller, cheaper, and better. Uh, many people are still don't believe in this because they do not understand the power of exponential change and exponential technologies. But as Arthur Schopenhauer, the German philosopher, said, all truth goes through three stages. In the first stage, it is ridiculed. In the second stage, it is violently opposed. And in the third stage, it is accepted as self-evident. So I want to watch again this video in 2045 and then look back into today from the future in 2045. And we will see how barbaric we were today that we let people die. And we let people die being so close to stop aging and reverse aging. This is becoming big news and big businesses. Uh, all the billionaires now are learning that this is true, that this is happening. And um, Jeff Bezos and Yuri Milner and other billionaires just began in 2021, a new company called Altos Labs with the objective to stop aging and reverse aging. This is a new initiative among many others by billionaires and millionaires who understand that we are very close to reverse the aging process. In fact, this would be the biggest industry of the planet in the next two decades. Um, in the last five years, there is a growing ecosystem uh, in terms of longevity and rejuvenation technologies. It began with millions of dollars. Now it is reaching billions of dollars, and soon it will be reaching trillions of dollars trillions of dollars. This is incredible and this is happening fast. This is increasing exponentially. Many doctors, many biologists, scientists are realizing that this is the biggest opportunity for the future of humanity. And they are doing a lot of research and uh, writing articles and even writing books like uh, David Sinclair from Harvard who wrote this book, Life is Pain, Life is Pain, Why We Age and Why We Don't Have to. And he's doing incredible experiments like uh, the cover article of the Nature magazine in December 2020 about blind mice that through gene therapy were basically given sight back. Incredible. They were blind and they recovered sight through gene therapy. This is one of the incredible things we will see uh, in the future. In fact, we need to change our system from sick care today into real health care into the future and identify aging as the center of all the diseases. All the diseases that now we think are separate, actually they are related and they are very related and they follow aging. Aging is really the mother of all diseases. It is the worst disease and we have to consider it as a disease, but fortunately, we are beginning to understand it is a curable disease. If we look at uh, when people die of any disease, you see that there is an exponential increase of risk of dying according to age. Basically, if you are 10 years, 20 years old, you are very young and you don't get normally cancer or Alzheimer's or heart attacks. But when you age, you get all these diseases and more. If we could cure cancer, uh, scientists have discovered that maybe we could add three extra years of life, curing all cancers, three more years, maybe four years of life. If we cure all heart trouble or heart attacks, maybe we get four years, five years more of life. If we could cure them both, cancer and heart disease, maybe we get seven more years of life, which is not bad. However, if we cure aging, if we stop aging, if we reverse aging, 
we gain decades and decades of life, healthy life. In fact, this is so incredible that uh, the Nobel Prize in Medicine for the uh, year 2012 was given to two scientists, one of them from Japan, Shinya Yamanaka, that discovered uh, what we call today cellular reprogramming. We can reprogram the cells and make them age faster, age slower, or actually rejuvenate. So today we know it is possible to rejuvenate cells. And that again was the Nobel Prize in medicine in the year 2012. Uh, even better today, we know that there are immortal cells. In fact, cancer discovered how not to age. Cancer cells are called biologically immortal. And this was discovered in the year 1951 with a patient called Henrietta Lacks who died of cancer. She was born in 1920 and she died in 1951 when he was age 31. She died of cancer. And you know what? Her cancer is alive today. Yes, that cancer would be 101 years old today, but the cells look like teenager cells because they do not age. Cancer cells discovered how not to age. And this is just incredible because cancer cells didn't go to school. They don't know how to read and they learn how not to age. And they did not spend one dollar. They did not spend any money and they discovered how not to age. Therefore, now that we understand it, how cancer works, we will also discover how to stop aging because cancer did it without money and without education. But not only cancer cells are immortal, also germ cells, germ cells, which are the most important cells because they are needed for reproduction. Additionally, besides the good germ cells and the bad cancer cells, there are some organisms like hydras and medusas that are also considered biologically immortal or even better, bacteria. The first life forms of the planet, bacteria that reproduce symmetrically are also called biologically immortal. In fact, they are very unique because they have circular chromosomes with no beginning and no end. They don't have telomeres. And uh, actually they live indefinitely. They are called biologically immortal. So when people tell me that immortality is impossible, I say, how is it impossible? It already exists in nature. Immortality began with life, with bacteria. Cancer cells discover how not to age. Germ cells do not age. There are small organisms that do not age. And now we are going to discover it. So I actually created a political movement in Spain to take these ideas into the European Parliament. And I was a candidate to the European Parliament from Spain, where I am based now in Madrid. And I got several thousand votes in my home city, not enough to be elected member of the parliament, but it's a good beginning. And people has heard for the first time, many people, that we can stop aging, that we can reverse aging in the next few years. And one of the things I used to say using the Spanish flag is that before 1492, before the discovery of the America, the logo of Spain was non plus ultra, nothing far beyond Spain, because Spain was the end of the known world of the Roman Empire, nothing beyond Spain. So uh, that changed in 1492, and now Spain is called the country of plus ultra, the country of far beyond. And my objective is that by the year 2045, if not earlier, we say that Spain is the country of Vita plus Ultra, life far beyond, life into the future, eternal life. So in the future, I want to be younger, but not with a Russian app, app called a Face App. I want to be younger because we are going to have rejuvenation technologies. And I have been doing a lot of TV programs besides writing books and going to media and writing in newspapers. So I want to show you a video clip that I did 
with History Channel that came in three languages, in my mother tongue, Spanish, also in Portuguese and in English. Let's watch the video, which is a mix in the three languages, two minutes. La búsqueda del secreto para una vida eterna parece llegar a su fin. Los científicos creen que la tecnología ha llevado a la humanidad a prolongar más y más su existencia biológica. ¿Serán estos avances tecnológicos los que logren burlar a la muerte? Desde tiempos inmemoriales sabemos que el ser humano anhela una inmortalidad. Lo importante no es cuántos años vivimos, sino de qué manera los vivimos. Y aquí va a haber una gran confrontación entre las religiones y con la ciencia, al igual que ya ha ocurrido muchas veces. Pensar la vida como algo inmortal es pensar que de algún modo la vida no acabe. La criónica se dedica a congelar pacientes humanos con el objeto de que en el futuro revivirlos y curarlos de la enfermedad de la que murieron. We hope uh, to wake up in the future. That's one of those unknowns, but we're just have to try. People in cryonics, I think, tend to be kind of hard-headed people. Uh, we look at this as a rational bet. Nobody knows for sure what the future will bring, but we think there are great reasons for optimism. You know, if you're frozen, you don't know if you will come back. If you're not frozen, you know you will not come back. La medicina desde hace varias décadas busca prolongar la vida. Eso ya tiene efectos. Con respecto al proyecto Avatar 2045, proyecta en un futuro cercano, en 2045 consideramos que en ciencia es muy cercano poder realizar una descarga de la conciencia en un cuerpo robotizado. Vamos a subir nuestros cerebros a copias de nuestros cuerpos. ¿Será que llegaría algún momento que pediríamos para morir? Es el ciclo de la inmortalidad. Nosotros vamos a ver la muerte de la muerte. Vida Eterna. Estreno. Sábado 4 de mayo. Ok, my friends. So, uh, as you can see, I do believe that we are going to see the death of death in the next few years. And I have been saying that in many, in many programs on TV and other media. Um, so uh, you can watch our conferences from Transvision. Uh, they are online. You can watch the recordings. Just go to transvisionmadrid.com. Basically, all of these ideas also we talk about in a big, big event, which is called Rad Fest. Rad means revolution against aging and death. And the next edition will be in Las Vegas in October with all these fantastic people uh, that are leading this movement, that are moving, pushing our ideas forward. Even little children need to know that this is a revolution. This is a real revolution. So I love to say, Viva la revolution. People need to know this is a revolution. This is the biggest revolution in human history. And uh, at Red Fest, for the first time, we showed in 2019 the first scientific age reversal protocol, scientific age reversal protocol with what we knew at the time. And we hope to release in 2022 the second age reversal protocol because we have learned a lot, a lot in the last few years, also because of the pandemic. But anyway, I was talking about plan A. Plan A is immortality, and I am very confident and I am very positive that we should reach it by 2045, as I explained. And not only once, but twice. Remember, we will have hardware immortality and software immortality. So not just one immortality, but two immortalities. In any event, uh, death is always around because there are accidents, there are sadly also homicides and suicides, and still diseases and other problems. So we have to be ready also for plan B, because 
death is still around and we can die anytime. So we have to be prepared for death. And for that, we have plan B, which is cryopreservation or cryonics. Again, this was impossible. It was a dream. It was the idea of charlatans about freezing people. Uh, but then it began uh, slowly but surely. It began with the cryopreservation of a sperm and then eggs and then embryos, tissues, organs, and eventually whole organisms. What was impossible 60 years ago today is a reality. Actually, I like to say that everything is impossible until it becomes possible. And there is nothing that says that uh, cryonics couldn't work. In fact, it works so well that most cows today, they, they, are, uh, uh, they, they, uh, they are born because of artificial insemination of a cryonically suspended uh, sperm or embryos uh, or eggs. So this works. Also with humans, there are over 8 million humans who have been born thanks to in vitro fertilization using cryonically suspended eggs, sperm, or embryos. So this works even with humans when we are very small, but it works, we know. So anyway, um, uh, Benjamin Franklin actually had some of these ideas and he, he talked about them over two centuries ago that he wanted to see the future. Uh, people closer to our time, our friends who are alive today, Max Moore or Ray Kurzweil or Aubrey de Grey also believe in this and they work actively promoting these ideas too. Um, in fact, today we have three ways to die. Well, death is never good, but at least now we have the best way to die, which is to be cryonically suspended. Why? Because this is the only chance, only real second opportunity that we might have if we die. The first type of death um, with our ancestors hundreds of thousands of years ago was burials. Burials we know happened even uh, with other uh, ancestors, hominids, not just homo sapiens, maybe half a million years ago. Then um, cremation. Cremation was invented tens of thousands of years ago. But about 60 years ago, we have cryonics. And cryonics, and as I have mentioned, we know it works for in vitro fertilization. We know it works with uh, also cows and other animals in terms of um, insemination and also keeping uh, some tissues and some organs. Um, there are two large cryonics institutions in the USA. Uh, one is Cryonics Institute and they have patients all over the world, as you can see uh, in Michigan. And the other one is Alcor located in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. That besides the USA also has members internationally. I actually have have had the pleasure to be basically in most of these cryonics facilities in the world. Actually, I even uh, had a, a TV documentary in Alcor or a cryonics institute here or cryo rules uh, outside of Moscow. I also visited Osiris Back to Life, which is a new facility in uh, Miami, Florida. And I was in charge of coordinating the first cryonic suspension in continental Spain, in the Iberian Peninsula in 2016. So this is actually a tragedy, but when a tragedy happens, the least we can do, and certainly for our family, for our friends, is to try to, to give them a second chance into the future. In fact, we say that cryonics is an ambulance, but an ambulance into the future not an ambulance from your home to the hospital. It is an ambulance from the present into the future. Also, uh, Maria Entraigues did the first cryonic suspension in South America when her mother died. And now uh, she is in Alcor, her mother. And uh, so there are patients from many different 
parts around the world, as you can see, from Spain, from Argentina, uh, from Russia, as I mentioned, from uh, the USA, Canada, United Kingdom, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There is mountain evidence that cryonics for the whole body will work and for uh, reanimation of the brain, at least, for reading our memories, for bringing our minds back to life. Uh, scientists from MIT, Harvard, NASA, Cambridge, etc., uh, talk about this. And a friend is coordinating uh, this document uh, showing what uh, scientists say and who have signed supporting these ideas. Also, some of my students from Singularity University created the Organ Preservation Alliance, whose objective is to cryonically suspend most organs and reanimate them into the future, and obviously, eventually, the brain as well. The brain is very complex and complicated because it is the most complex structure, not only in our body, in the known universe. There is no more complex structure, uh, biological structure that we know than the human brain. There are many books uh, that I recommend. One is by my friend Ashwin De Wolf and Stephen Bridge, Preserving Minds, Saving Lives. And many other books covering different areas, like even financial areas and insurance. And my friend Rudy Hoffman uh, wrote this fantastic book, The Affordable Immortal. Maybe you can beat death and taxes. Isn't that nice? After all, we can beat death and taxes. And it is not expensive. Again, it is not really expensive. So. Around the planet, people are learning that this is really true, that this is a possibility. And uh, in Europe, we have had several conferences. The first major conference was in Basel, Switzerland in 2016. And we also had some cryonics training. After that, I organized a cryonic so summit in Madrid, in Spain. And then, I also organized another one in 2018, the Transition Conference, the Transhumanist Conference, where we had a lot of sessions about cryonics. There was another training on cryonics in the Netherlands, in Utrecht, in 2018. And then 2019 and 2020, because of COVID, uh, it was virtual. We had a very nice biostasis conference you can see, not using the word cryonics, because some people don't really like cryonics, even though we say biostasis, the science of cryonics. And just recently in October, we had the first uh, cryonics first re response training in Sweden. And then we had another fantastic um, conference in, um, in Zurich, uh, which is biostasis 2021 in Zurich, where we actually visited an incredible place, the first uh, center in Western Europe, which is going to be just north of uh, Zurich. Um, and it is the European Biostasis Foundation. You can uh, go to the website and find out more about this because this place is going to be more incredible than Alcor in Arizona or Cryonics Institute in Michigan. So let's show a video of this facility that should be opening in March or April next year. Let's watch it. So my friends, as you can see, this is truly incredible. Uh, this is happening all around the world, all around the planet. There is a lot of interest on uh, cryonics or biostasis, if you prefer to use that word. Um, 
So uh, I plan to organize a cryonics first response training in Madrid next year, because my goal is that we have this also available in Spain and then in nearby countries, of course, in Portugal, France, Italy, etc. And there are many companies uh, uh, or institutions, organizations offering this uh, second chance to live in the future. We have talked about Alcor, Life Extension Foundation, Cryonics Institute, CryoRoost, TransTime, Oregon Cryonics. In China also, this is interesting, Yinfen Group in China, Yinfen, now they have a dozen patients. They have moved very fast. In just about five years, they have grown, gone from zero to a dozen patients. And we also have Cryonics America, and uh, now in Germany, Cryonics Germany, and soon in Switzerland, north of Zurich, the European Biostasis Foundation. So there are many projects. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, we have had patients in Argentina and a new facility will also open next year in 2022 in Australia. In between the two largest cities, in between Sydney and Melbourne, there will be the first cryonics facility in Australia. Uh, we talked about a, a, a series back to life in Florida and hopefully soon also in Spain. Well, this is just to finish that um, this is plan B. We need to remember our friends, our loved ones, and the opportunity of the reanimation in the future. And that is why we have this event today, December 16th the remembrance of the resurrectables. So thank you so much. It is a pleasure to share all of this information. And I like to say to all my Trekkie friends, live long and prosper, my friends. Thank you, Jose. Thank you for that great presentation. We have a few questions, if we could. Yes, of course. So I'd like to mention the fact that, uh, Jose, I'm very envious of the fact that you met with Sir Arthur C. Clarke in Sri Lanka so many years ago. You're a very lucky man to have met him and have spoken with him in person. And I'd like to ask how you personally first learned about cryonic suspension. Do you recall? Well, I love science fiction. And in fact, Sir Arthur C. Clarke in his books uh, a space odyssey he talks about some astronauts being uh, in cryonics and he believed so much in cryonics that he actually wanted if it had been possible to be cryonically suspended and he thought that we could be reanimated by the end of the century which is the same as my friend ray kurzweil talks about but ray kurzweil is even more optimistic because of these exponential technologies and these incredible advances in technologies so maybe we could reanimate people in the 2050s as early as the 2050s so this is an incredible possibility i i hope it happens um, because then there will be almost no loss of time no loss of continuity between the present and the future even for these people that uh, are deanimated now and can be reanimated into the future. So anyway, I learned about cryonics through science fiction. And Sir Arthur C. Clarke obviously was one of the greatest uh, writers in science fiction, even though he was an engineer. He was an electric engineer and, and he loved the future. And as an engineer, he wanted to to see all the technologies of the future. He also talked about immortality. Um, so, and I like that because he was an engineer, first of all. Yes, that's true. We have a question from Janet, and this is our question and answers time. We're taking questions from both our live stream as well as right here in our Zoom presentation. So a question from Janet, do you know of any COVID victims that were frozen? And if they were brought back, do you think that would create a contagion? Well, actually, I do not know. Um, also because um, the, the country hit, us, uh, hit the hardest was the USA. And I don't know the cases in uh, Alcor or in Cryonics Institute, but it could be possible to be found out 
just checking the last few cases. Uh, in terms of COVID coming back, no, I don't think it, uh, it will come back. Actually, I think this will be the last global pandemic in history, the last. Why? Because technology is advancing so fast that um, these new type of vaccines, messenger RNA vaccines are so incredibly powerful that they are being uh, used now for um, vaccines for cancer, HIV, AIDS, and for malaria. And this is to me mind blowing because these are three totally different medical conditions, three totally completely different medical problems. Cancer is our own cells that stop aging our mutant cells that stop aging. And that is something that will be fixed with uh, these vaccines, mRNA vaccines. Then we also have uh, malaria. Malaria is a parasite and the same type of vaccines can be used to stop malaria. And then HIV AIDS, which is a virus like COVID, okay? So this new technology is so incredibly powerful that um, once we have these vaccines, it trains our body to stop AIDS, to stop malaria, to stop cancer. So it is a really powerful technology. So incredible that I, I am convinced, and I have written this in the chronology of the future of life, that in the next uh, nine years, by 2030, we will have a vaccine for HIV AIDS, we will have a vaccine for malaria, and we will have a vaccine for most cancers. Maybe not all of cancers because they are very different and there are hundreds of cancers, but for most of them. Uh, therefore, we will have no pandemics into the future. I'll tell you something else which is also important to know in terms of pandemics and virus and all of this. The first vaccines were developed before having discovered viruses, which is really interesting. We didn't know what a virus was when a vaccine was developed uh, by the end of the 18th century. Uh, in England, in the 1790s, the first vaccines were developed. We had no knowledge of viruses, but that vaccines took, uh, you could say, centuries to develop. Now vaccines are faster and faster and faster. And uh, genome sequencing began in the 1950s, 1960s. We could sequence part of the genome. When AIDS appears in the 1970s, 1980s, first, we didn't know what it was. And then suddenly the virus was identified and it took two years to sequence the genome of the AIDS virus, two years to sequence it. When the first SARS, the first SARS 20 years ago appeared, it took only two months to sequence. So I repeat, with AIDS four decades ago, two years. With SARS two decades ago, two months. And with COVID-19, the virus was sequenced in two weeks. This is incredible. From two years to two months to two weeks. And not only that, the vaccines were developed even faster. The vaccines having the sequence of the virus that was sent via email from China. Also, most people don't know this. The Chinese, when they identified the, the virus, some scientists, they began sequencing it. And it took two weeks, as I mentioned it. They sent it via email to some laboratories in uh, Europe and North America to Pfizer, Moderna, BioNTech, and other companies. And the first vaccines were developed in two days, two days. I repeat, two weeks to sequence the virus in China, sent immediately via email, and two days to develop the first vaccines. So in 10 years, we will have the capabilities to sequence the virus, not in two weeks, in two days, and then in two hours, and we will develop vaccines at that speed too. So there will be almost no probability, no possibility for the virus to spread once we identify it, and we will have the technology to identify the virus anyway very quickly. So like we are identifying the, the variants like uh, Omicron, this was done very quickly. In the future, it will be even more quickly, and we will develop 
appropriate vaccine. So uh, just to finish with this issue, to me, this is the last pandemic in human history, which is beautiful. No more pandemics, thanks to exponential technologies. Yes, thank you, Jose. And this question goes beyond COVID. It goes to all of the diseases. At the time at which we are able to bring people back out of cryonic stasis is a time where we will have all diseases cured. We'll have cures for cancers and diabetes and all diseases. And that's a time where people who, if they die from a particular cancer, then they can come back cancer-free. And of course, we'll be in an age where we can reverse the aging process. So being healthy and young, vibrant, and to be able to live again. We have a question uh, now. Uh, Dawn, let's go ahead and highlight Dawn and bring Dawn in. She has a question for you here in our live uh, Zoom presentation. So Dawn, you're on. Thank you, Neil. Um, my question from a beginner's perspective is how you think that cryonics and cellular immortality that we're now discovering um, can work hand in hand in the future to uh, achieve everyone's goals of longevity. Well, I think uh, very soon we will discover why germ cells do not age, why cancer cells do not age, and why they are called biologically immortal. Uh, and we will apply this to the rest of the body to be basically indefinitely young. Again, I repeat also even small organisms like hydras and some medusas, they, they also do not age. There are also some species, some animals that live centuries. You know, there are some sharks that uh, are thought to live 400, 500 years, sharks and whales two centuries, also some uh, turtles two centuries. So we humans are not the longest lived animals. And we can discover also why some of these animals live for so long, like they can actually cure cancer in their own bodies much better than we humans. So all of this will give us the possibility to be indefinitely young, which is the objective. We don't want to be indefinitely old. We want to be indefinitely young and to live for as long as we want young. This is not like a, an obligation. You are not obliged to live forever. If you get bored, you, you can always die. You know, this is very democratic. Uh, people will always be able to die because death, sadly, will always be around. There will be accidents. There will be homicides. Probably, sadly, there will be suicides, even more sadly. And, and maybe a comet, a comet crashes against our planet and we all die. So what will happen in the next few uh, years? We will be curing all diseases, including the mother of all diseases, which is aging. Uh, at the same time, the population is coming under control. And basically the population of the planet is stabilizing. And in most advanced countries, actually, it is going down. It is going down. The population of uh, Japan, Europe, Russia is, coming, is going down very uh, fast. In fact, in China also, which is not uh, at the highest economic development level, but in China, the population is already uh, aging very fast. And it will begin declining because of the one child policy that they had during very many decades. So what is going to happen in China, according to the forecast today, that will change, of course, they will change because we will uh, stop aging. But as of now, if nothing changes, the population of China will decrease to half of its value today. The population will go down from about 1.4 billion people to 700 million people. This is incredible. This is like losing two USAs, the United States disappearing twice in China, um, losing over 700 million people in China and in peace, okay? Just because of aging and people dying. So anyway, I don't worry about overpopulation. I think that the problem is the opposite. It is underpopulation. Uh, most of the planet is reaching a stability of population. And uh, even though 
our ancestors, our grandparents, they had five and 10 children. People today have one or two children or none at all. So the population is stabilizing and uh, I think this will continue and um, the world will be very different in the next two to three decades with no diseases and with no aging, uh, even though immortality is not mandatory, uh, but people will have fun, people will be happy, we, people will be healthier, people will be wealthier, people will be wiser, and the world will be a much better place for all of us. I don't know if this answered your question, so many ideas, but, but a lot of um, things to think about. And it will be in my book, hopefully next year in English. Great, Jose. We have another question from Janet for you. How have you seen cryonics improve over the years and how do you see it improving in the future? Very good question because when cryonics began, it was very rudimentary. Even um, in terms of insemination, let me tell you, when it was discovered that the sperm, the spermatozoids could be frozen, that was relatively easy because the spermatozoids are very tiny and they don't have a lot of liquid, they don't have a lot of water, so you can freeze them into liquid nitrogen and then reanimate them without most, without almost no problems, okay? With uh, eggs, it doesn't happen that way, sadly. With eggs, if you freeze the eggs, and then you try to unfreeze them, they die because uh, crystals are formed on the eggs and the same on embryos. And therefore scientists had to develop a new technology which is called vitrification. Vitrification injects a cryopreservative on the egg or on the embryo so that you can freeze it and then unfreeze it, okay? So it took time to create or invent vitrification. So. Um, cryonics has been improving and now we can uh, cryonically suspend sperm, eggs, embryos, tissues and some organs. This is a still work in progress. Uh, we can um, cryonically suspend the kidneys of uh, certain animals and then reanimate them. Uh, more organs will be cryonically suspended and reanimated in the future and eventually whole organisms. So this is improving through time. Uh, and we only learn when we do experiments because that is how science works. And there is no manual. There is no manual that tells you how cryonics works. Uh, in terms of humans cryonics, it has also changed radically. James Bedford was the first patient cryonically suspended on January 12, 1967. So he's going to be 55 years old, frozen. Not frozen, again, cryonically suspended, which is the proper term. Uh, 55 years in cryonic suspension. Uh, when he was suspended, it was very primitive. It was basically putting him in liquid nitrogen. Now, more procedures have been developed and there is a lot of, uh, not just vitrification, but many cryopreservation liquids that are um, put into the body in order to do a more successful cryonic suspension. So this is still evolving. We don't know uh, and many things. We need to do experiments. Scientists are doing experiments with um, animals first, obviously. And um, we will keep on discovering things. We don't know uh, what we will discover in the next few years, but I think cryonic suspension, it is advancing. We are learning more. And every year we do cryonic suspension better and better. And this new center opening in Zurich in Switzerland, well, actually north of uh, Zurich, about 20 kilometers north, um, it's a great place because they will have also a lot of research. They will be doing research to know more about how cryonics work and then also how reanimation might work in the future. So it is advancing, it will continue advancing. This is how science works. Excellent answer, Jose. We have one last question tonight, which comes from Eugene. And he asks, are you aware, is there any interest in creating 
a college of cryonics? Well, there is an interest on in having the standards because uh, some cryonics facilities are just frauds. And they were at the beginning of the cryonics movement in the USA as well. In the 1960s, when James Bedford was cryonically suspended, many patients actually were lost after being cryonically suspended because the companies or the organizations that did it were really frauds. So uh, we are trying to have standards, uh, medical standards, scientific standards, legal standards, uh, even if you want economic standards, because we need to know how much money each patient might need into the future, okay? That is why different companies also have different uh, expenses and they charge differently because they consider different things for reanimation, during reanimation and after reanimation to bring the person back into society. So we don't know the answers to many of these things. So it would be fantastic to have a standardization or, or more knowledge about all these issues that go, I repeat, all the way from legal issues, scientific, economic issues. And there is a lot of discussion and uh, different institutions bring new ideas. I think that the European Biostasis Foundation will bring many new ideas, just like the new Australian facility opening um, very soon in 2022. And also China. You know, China is, is, is a disruptor. They disrupt every industry and they might disrupt traditional cryonics. Just the incredible growth. I mean, this is a very small uh, sector, okay? Uh, throughout the planet, there might be only like 500 people who are cryonically suspended, uh, which is nothing because every year about, uh, I don't know, I think it is 80 million or, or 70 million people die every year. So how is it possible that only 500 people have been cryonically suspended in half a century when, uh, you know, 60 million, 80 million people die every year. It, it is horrible. So anyway, um, it is good if we have better standards, also if we have competitions, and I think China will bring competition and will accelerate uh, what other cryonics uh, institutions will do because now they are also competing for patients, like hospitals, you know, hospitals sometimes compete. They might have better cancer treatment in one hospital and better heart uh, treatment in another, another hospital and better neuro treatment in another, another hospital. So it is good to have competition, collaboration, to keep on moving up, up, up the standards. We need to make this better and better. We need cryonics to be uh, more scientific also and um, better financed better supported and with more people doing research and participating and then it will spread because this is the last generation to die actually i like to say we are between the last mortal generation and the first immortal generation isn't this incredible in this generation in the next few years in the next few decades we are between the last people who will have to die without wanting to die, of course, and the first generation of people that will not have to die if they don't want to die. So really fantastic time to be alive. I wish all of you to stay alive because if you survive, if you stay alive the next 20, 25, 30 years, you will live long enough to live forever if you want to live forever, which I hope you want to live forever because life is beautiful, life is fantastic, and life is only going to get better and better in the future. So it is the time to be alive, to stay alive, to remain alive, and to have a wonderful future life. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. Thank you for a wonderful presentation this evening. Live long and prosper, Neil, and all the friends. Thank you, Jose, and you too. It's called Forever Young.
May the good Lord be with you down every road you roll. And may sunshine and happiness surround you when you're far from home. And may you grow to be proud, dignified and true. And do unto others as you'd have done to you. and be brave and in my heart you'll always stay forever young forever young forever young forever young may good fortune be with you may your guiding light be strong build a stairway to heaven with a prince or a vagabond in vain and in my heart you will remain forever young forever young forever young forever young forever young forever young Right behind you, win or lose, forever young. 